What was that? We're having a quickie. Onward! Your We're words, on. words, not mine. We're on. <laughs> Your words, not mine, said Lockhart. All okay. right. So, there is leveling up. That's been done. And uh, hit points that need to be rolled. Yes, they do. What are my As hit points again? D8. 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 I always forget. Ah! Oh, Gary. Oh, seven. Thank you very much. That's nine for me. I think I'll have my phone my pencils here. Why are all my pencils pink? Because pink yeah. is a wonderful color. Apparently. Uh, that gives me an additional nine hit points. That's good. I'm at 86. Are you all in roll 20 thing yet? Yes. Yep. yes. Are you not there? No. Oh, sorry, baby. It's okay. I forgot how to get there, honey. <laughs> Flip the bouton on the left-hand side that looks like a big pink dice. But uh, yeah, so you can add that to your max. You can also add that to your current. Uh, oh yeah, as, I need to do as that. you as you exit through the meat gate, you feel renewed and experienced. The meat gate is a horrid term for anything, Lockhart. Oh yeah. Just saying, the meat gate is not a pleasant thing. It does uh, not make me happy. You know, how, how, meat. How, how could I not milk that term, the meat gate? The meat gate is just... Milking the meat. Horrid. Okay, I've improved my max and also my current by 11. 11? That's 11? Yeah. 9, excuse me, by 9. I, I, I was like, how did you get a plus 4? Your con isn't that high. No, it's plus 2. There we I go. have plus 1. The stereo is mighty. What do you roll? Yeah. A D8. Everybody's on D8, huh? Yep. Ooh, maxed for you. You also get plus whatever your con bonus is. Uh, did she yeah. get her favorite class stuffs? Oh, no, I didn't give her a mm. favorite class stuff. She needs to select that too. It's simple. It's either an extra skill point or an extra hit point. Extra hit point. Oh, yeah. For, for you, definitely. Missed Ten. drowning in skill points. So that would be 62 hit points. You also need two extra languages, but I guess we can do that as we go. Uh, let's, 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 let's pick them quick here. Okay, what's useful for Care Mega? What libs here? Everything. Everything. Oh. Okay, well, I, would, I have. That's where I was mostly going to go. <laughs> Necro, Aklo. I guess you don't have, like, you don't have, do you have Infernal and all of that stuff? No. No. I've got so, Infernal. I have Common, Tengu, Verizian, Draconic, Thessalonian, Giant, Sylvan, Boglodite, Dwarven, Elven, Halfling, and Bogard. And I need two more. Uh, Shawanti would be the other regional language of some note. Okay. Um, no, I, I was going to suggest something Slightly interesting, but not particularly useful. Um, uh, I have much. So you have giant. You have giant. You said. Yeah, I've got giant. You have orc. <laughs> I don't have orc. I should maybe take orc. <laughs> There's so many languages. Apparently, Vegapygmy is a language. <laughs> All right, I've got them. Used by Vegapygmies. Uh, and you have, so you have Elven? Monster now. Yeah, I've taken Shalonti and Orc. Okay. Did, did we need to pick her other two? Or did no, we, we, only got a those... one, we only got a one rank. Okay, but I thought there was those two we weren't sure about that have never been picked from the I think she, I think we got them. I think she got Boggard and something else last session or the session before. I think we okay. leveled those out. Mm -hmm. they, were on... I got they were scribbled on the bottom of her character sheet. I assumed we'd add them. Mm -hmm. she, has like okay. four, she has 14 languages now. <laughs> okay. How many hit points? Uh, how many skill points have I got? You had eleven, but I've spent them for you. Okay. I thought you said you hadn't done them. No, uh, you no, got. That's... No, I spent that's your skill that's points. Right. That's how you've got two languages. Okay. I gave you a point in linguistics. So. <laughs> Is there anything else I have to update? Uh, no. You've got your feet. You've got your hit points. You've got your languages. You're good. Okay. Do you want to give a quick breakdown for listeners, or just have them guessing? <laughs> it depends. Shall we say we'll keep them guessing until my, my donations bar hits $100? Yeah. 
Hey. Yeah. They'll be guessing forever. I know, right? They'll be <laughs> guessing forever. Because yeah. that bar hasn't gone up in months. I just keep rolling the days over. <laughs> it's the same bar that started in, like, October. Oh. And I, I haven't blanked it to zero in months. Have I not done it since October? I thought I'd done it in... I think okay, yeah, you occasionally bump it up a little bit, and there's a couple of people other who else do who who do it too, but most people do not look at my donations. But it's kind of sad. Should, I think you should pop it back to zero now and then, because seeing it at zero is a bit more of a oh goodness, yeah, this site that, could shut then, down any day. Then you've got that mental thing of you know the guy with the cup on the street with the dog. Yeah. His, his cup is empty. You don't want to be the first guy to give him something. It's really? like most bartenders I know. Up their put, tip jar at the start put of the money day. in the tip jar, mm. yeah. Because of the I'm not sure they, about that. I don't know about it online, but yes. I, Alternatively, become a fucking patron, damn it. They're much more helpful. <laughs> I did like the Ooh. old site one where it listed the you know the people that had donated and stuff. That was... I don't yeah. have the app to do that at this point, but we should maybe look at building it in. Yeah. Ruby. Bad Ruby noise. I remember uh, when I used to donate just to make you say my name on audio. Yes. <laughs> Would you like me to start reading out people's names on audio again? We could do that. that. Could, Good. It would be a very short list. Hey, um, donate money if you want us to put our names on the next uh, podcast. Totally do that. Or become <laughs> a patron and get or brand new. Donate money if you don't want us to list who you are. <laughs> That's a big Hush list. money. Hush money. I'll buy that. <laughs> anyway, yes. Should I go first? Because sure. I'm really simple. Um, I can hit stuff better. Uh, I learnt Thessalonian, as per the previous agreement. Um, I took greater weapon focus unarmed, which means I can hit stuff better. And I got improved evasion. And that's about all that happened, really. What, one of these days, I will work up the nerve to actually be one of those GMs that says, no, you can't evade being in the middle of a fireball. Right, and then, then there'll be lots of shouting, and like, well, I hide, I hid behind Gary the Elf. Yes, yes. <laughs> that um, is an interesting argument, though. Well, it's it, sorry, don't want to get too off topic, but it's kind of one of those let's, things that let's, let's save it for when we do those one-offs for the patrons area lock out. There, there we go. Yeah, we need we need to start sidebarring our conversations in mini podcasts. That's right, <laughs> t t ten minute mini podcasts where we debate and unbox the problems. Yes, I think that's a good one. Uh, all right. Uh, um, who wants to go next? Oh, oh I will. Well, oh, never mind. Losing you. Uh, I got a whopping ten extra hit points. Um, whopping. Uh, whopping two extra languages. Whopping. And uh, the best feat in the entirety of ever. <laughs> dirty trick, which I shall not use on any of the party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can just imagine you're walking down the street. Lindsay says, um, can I start a surprise round? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I tie your shoelaces together. How do I do whisper to GM again? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, 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 I um, think it's slash W. Yeah, okay. I slash W. And you should just be able to go Lockhart. I don't remember. I think you can do slash W GM, actually. To you. <laughs> I'll figure it out. No, if you want, to try it. <laughs> Test stuff. Uh, okay. So yes. Uh, anything else? Yes, yes. I got those. I got those. That's just slash w space gm. Works. Look at you all showing off faster than I can even type. No. <laughs> well, my laptop's on a on a separate thing, and it's higher than my arm, so actually. Oh, are you comfy in there? I'm comfy-ish, but it's not very conducive to typing as fast as normal. You can see our, our nice curtains behind your head. Yeah. And the lamp is all ambient and everything. And all the plain blinds that we have to have. Yeah, that's that's beige number 4296542. Actually, that, that mine's not mm. empty. I know, but it's full of coffee, it's... so it's empty to me. It's, it's almost <laughs> a shame Hal has the um, recording computer there uh, in plain sight otherwise I could whisper things to Vecna alone and <laughs> yeah, that would be funny that would be funny I promise not to look uh, GM whispers uh, to Vecna just wait for this one 
Do you have to put the message in brackets or just... No. No, you just slash W, uh, space, the person's name, space, and whatever you want to say. Okay. Uh, anyway, so uh, what is Gary's new leveled up abilities? Uh, let's see. I got some new skills in my knowledge and diplomacy and spellcrafty skills. Uh, I got new spells in the communal version of protection from evil. Hooray, let's hope we don't get anything communicable through it. Stone shape. Hopefully I can do something clever with that. And holy smite, because Gary's just such a holy roller. Yes, he is. With How well can I not do something clever with stone shape? <laughs> I mean, I mean it's just, just suddenly turn that town statue into whatever you want it to be. <laughs> oh, just give me the chance. Well, it's except I can't do fine detail, so I'm I can't make say, the... It's a crude version of whatever yeah. he wants it to be. I can't make the horrible caricature of Nearmore. You can, but it looks like a Charles of take much. sculpted it. He doesn't take much to turn the statue of the town founder into a penis. Well, that's, that's true. true. A, crude, could just, a crude could penis just, that looks like a four-year-old carved it. Or I can stretch an enormous penis out of it or give it breasts. Or... That'd be funny. But but crude breasts. Yes. <laughs> Which are the best kind? Just saying. <laughs> I don't know if there's a bad kind. That's true, yeah. <laughs> Um, possibly sorry, old, then. possibly old lady breasts. Man uh, for Brunsk the cohort, Hello. Uh, he has taken improved two up in fighting. He can now oh, use four good. attacks. That's good. And um, his endurance to cold has gone up slightly. And that's um quite 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 mostly it. I'm gonna say nine nine is a bit miserable, isn't it? Really, you get a feint, and that's about all. He's a, he's actually seven. Yeah, oh, well, I guess yeah, I guess seven's pretty miserable too. Hey, this is session thirty. Yes. Hey. We should have a party. <laughs> you will just be arriving in the city. Yay! We made it to session thirty. So hang on, this is the start of book. So we're averaging fifteen <laughs> sessions a book. Well, no, no, we've been on this for two sessions. We're more fourteen mm -hmm. sessions a book, really. Okay, so fourteen sessions a book means we should be finished by session. Holy crap! Eighty-four. We we no. will see. Some some people have said this module has been very quick for them. Really. Really. Well, clearly, they're not us. Um. <laughs> they, I, I will say they have used some tactics that would have required purchases that I probably would have said no to, so yes. Like what, so we can ask? Nope. Yeah. Nope. What have they been buying? Nope. Like items we wouldn't get hold of. Mm -hmm. Items you'd have to know the adventure to uh, buy ahead of time? Well, just things that let you that avoid thing. lots of stuff. Like but then you would, of, but then you would be finding things under, under, lover, un, under leveled. Like invisibility and stuff. Where you just um, run, run more, past more the like, canvas. More like pass wall. Oh, I read that, where they were just like blowing down through the dungeon with pass wall scrolls. Yeah, yeah. No. How much is a pass wall scroll? Cheap enough. Yeah, I guess. It's a scroll. Like, even ninth level aren't going to be much more than 2,000 or something. I guess that's true. Well, I mean, I only need a couple of pass wall scrolls to get through half the dungeon. But no, no password. No, I'll be able to stone it. shape uh, small uh, tunnels in. in you know, it's true. Tunnels. It's true. You will be able to stone shape if you know. Hopefully, fog of war helps with that. Well, that's the thing with passwall. How did they know which way to go? Um, just general things. Like if you see a building, you can kind of assume if it's the place where there's no direct entrance to, just yeah. pop through the back wall. Hmm. Uh, yeah, and you would turn up somewhere where you weren't supposed to get. Yeah. And rear end the adventure. You're hey, in my furnace. Enough of that. Uh, are we all good to start then? Let's do this thing. Oh, say it again. Yes. Big city. We're waiting to say it again. Meat good. <laughs> Is that like Stargate, but a lot messier? I think, yeah, if Stargate just made meat, it would be, you know, turn it on. Shrink <laughs> through the meat gate. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be a pawn thing. Uh, where are we? So, he's screwed up at now. Seven Chevron is locked. So, stepping out of the meat gate, meat good. You enter almost directly 
Um, well, there's a, you're a small distance away from Caramega. But you all the same, very close to uh, an area of Caramega known as the Warrens. Caramega um, is much different than typical city. Uh, the structure is an enormous hexagonal stone ring, many hundreds of feet thick, and uh, typically the citizens live in the wall, in the vast hollows and stacked empty chambers inside the stone walls themselves, rather than in the open space in the ring center. The Warren is one part of this hexagon that has been broken through and basically it's no longer there. So it is open to the sky, as well as there are the uh, two open entries into the ring. And to help you kind of get an idea of the city, we have handouts. Hooray! Because hey. there's absolutely no sense to my tiny brain. It's supposed to be a role play. Ah, uh, that makes better sense. I so, have that map. Do you? I think so. You probably possibly have. This, I think this we one, should just I... go hang out in the bottoms. This this one I quite liked. Um, so you can see the bottom edge there is literally on the edge of a cliff. Oh, Widdershins. Right. I thought it said Uddershins for a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's some kind of crazy condition where you get like a... You don't cow. want the moon you get, you get into a cow, there. Your udders are a bit low. <laughs> so you can yeah, see... Um, a bitch. The, the, the Warren is um, a place where the, the, it has, the wall has been broken down. So you can see just from a small distance how there are um, these buildings made from the broken block as well as just tents. And a, it's much more of a um, uh, vagrant type um, or mobile kind of community look to it. But there are some established structures there. And immediately to kind of the north and south of it, you see these huge hollow ring stone walls where inside are proper buildings, as well as where people are just building onto the walls themselves. Or it, it, it looks very maze-like and difficult to navigate just looking at it from a glance. Uh, by the meat gate where you enter from, yes, um, <clears throat> is basically um, where you can see multiple stables and um, discount butcher shops already. You can see people herding them together, some brief auctions going on for people who want to, they don't really want to stay or go further into the city. Um, and even out here, you see that there is a wide variety of people living here, for lack of a better word. <laughs> um, you, It's um, very much, while there are humans, there are a huge variety of cultures here. You see even as far as other people from Tien, as well as from the more um, Vudra-type countries, and or, um, what's what's the Egypt one? Or Orisian? Orisian, yeah, Orisia. Yes. But there are also a large number of Shwanti and Verisians and people of Chelish descent as well. You see many um, halflings as well as a fair number of half-orcs, and even some who appear to be full-blood orcs as well. Um, you're pretty sure that large person walking away is actually a troll, judging by the fact that they have basically a cow over their shoulder that they're bringing back into town. Nice. Uh, it's a fairly good uh, market going on here, but for the most part... A lot of it seems to be um, preliminary prep and storage uh, before they're brought further into the city. Have um, secure. And otherwise, you can kind of see the general path into the worms. So where are we? The out edge. Yeah. Where Sorry. are we heading here, Gary the Elf? I believe we're supposed to find a guide first. Are we? It has been suggested by one or two people that you find a guide for the city. Did anyone suggest where to find one? Lawrence. We should have asked that dude. Well, I think he's one of the ones that told us he advised us to get a guide. Oh. Abra Lapati. It, it, it would seem logical that 
the um, clear entrance into the city would be a place you could find a guide. Okay. We'll wander through looking for a guide. But we need to find the right and honest guide. That's right. Well, you can cast Detect Evil on him. Oh, yeah, because I have to, totally have that. Oh, we can cast Protection from Evil and try and give him a big hug and see what happens. <laughs> so we'll find our local Timmy. Yeah, right, <laughs> Tommy. So you walk towards the Warren, many storied shanty town, rickety scaffolding, and makeshift shacks. Uh, it's still with a wide corridor. As you begin to approach the general bustle of it, you are quickly swarmed by mobs of the local children of Care Mega. Brittany Hands! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, you're getting a 50% bonus on using against the swarm. Wait, no, this was a mob, not a swarm. That's yeah. funny. Um, they are all particularly jumping forward and trying to offer themselves as the um, best guides in Kermega and perception checks. Yeah, keep an eye on my shit, Lockhart. I totally believe it. 36. 14. My pouch is in some place they don't want to reach. They have tiny hands, Gary the Elf. And they're lubricated. <laughs> Full clinch! Uh, Your perception's 23. Yeah, it is. You're obscene. <laughs> <laughs> 42. You see the invisible people strolling down the street? Uh, Masaki and Nero are um, very... Oh, I suppose I should do um, one more here. Brunsk. Brunsk. Brunsk perception is an 18... Hey, and Brunsk <laughs> wards off the sticky hands of the pickpockets <laughs> amongst the um, would-be guides. I did not hear Gary mentioned there. No, no, Gary was not mentioned. <laughs> we, we end up, we walk, we walk through the mob, we turn around and Gary is naked. <laughs> <laughs> Gary they're they're is... like children walking around in robes and a funny hat. <laughs> Gary is too distracted by the compliments about how he seems to be the most wisest and powerful of elf wizards. And clearly he's come here to teach the other mages and bloat mages and the Ardok family how to do proper right magic. The Ardok family. Bloat mages. Uh, let's see here. I see what, my reputation has preceded myself. <laughs> uh, how do we do this? How do we do this? It's easy. You steal all Gary's things. I'm I'm looking for an amount I steal from Gary here. Gary the naked elf. I, su I suppose I I'll just check it against a perform check. That seems reasonable. Sleight of hand, isn't it normally? Uh, it is, but I was checking sleight of hand. It's not telling me how much to take. Only that I can take. It lets you palm um, a coin, a, a palm-sized object or a small object if they DC 20 it. I've really got to have two pouches: oh. the obvious one full of copper and the real money pouch that's. Secreted somewhere deep. Okay. Oh, it's very, very little. Some advantages get one silver piece off of you. Sure. One silver. I will hunt him to the ends of the earth. You're not quite sure which one. Anyway, He'll furthermore, kill all. Misaki Nearmore, your attention is brought to a um, boy who kind of stands aside and locks eyes with you and hails you. Welcome, Pathfinders, to Care Mega. I'd like to offer my services as the best guide in the city. So can I congratulate guide. you on having the Pacific... Yeah, I can't even say this word. Precipitous? <laughs> Precipitousness? Perspicacity? Perspicacity. To engage my services for a laughably low price of five gold coins a day. <laughs> that is laughable. And how He's does you know perhaps he's... 16 years old, a fair bit older than some of the other ones. He's skinny and wears rigged clothes, but carries himself with a good deal more confidence. And um, he um, kind of cuffs one of them that you was a particularly... Um, uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, pocketing person against you. 
Resilience, pickpocket, attempt against you. And what leads you to believe we're Pathfinders? Small lad. He um, points to the glyph on Yermore's belt. Oh, yeah. Sharp eyes. Perhaps we, perhaps we killed a Pathfinder mm. and stole his belt. Either way, sounds like you um, would best benefit from a guide who's able to show you the ins and outs and underbelly of Care Mega, best as can be. And what is your name? My name, Gov? That's Gavnally. That one word or two? Two. You can call me Gav for short if you like. Okay. That's kind of day at five silver. That sounds reasonable. Uh, five gold. Gov. What do we get for five gold? I can take you wherever you want to go. Give you all the knowledge of the city right at your fingertips. Hmm. As it were. Have you if seen my fingertips? Stay, Not I pretty. Take you there. If you're um, looking for a warm meal, I know the right places. Looking for a warm bed, I got those. And I got the cold beds too, if that's how you fancy. <laughs> So, are we hiring the little guy? Probably wise, so he can take us to whatever inn he gets a kickback from. <laughs> are you going to try and batter him down, Gary the Elf? Because <laughs> all I can do is beat him down. <laughs> and all Masaki can do is beat him off. So if Gary can diplomatize, I'm not sure if I can. Beat him down better than you can. <laughs> well, do you, want a, do you want a competition? <laughs> So you beat him first, then Gary will heal him, then I'll beat him, and he can tell us who hurt the worst. <laughs> Probably not a good idea. <laughs> he is remarkably confident in this, um, in standing there asking for five gold amidst all this talk of beating him. But which, we are joking, and we look like we're joking. So, of course, our enemies who arrived here first have put him up to being our guide, and he'll lead us into doom, but, you know, that's part of the life. Sense, his mo sense motive on him, Lockhart. Does he seem honest in his intentions to be a guide? All right. Or is he like a shill? I'm not very good at it, but it's worth a shot. How do you do secret rolls again? I uh, can't remember. Isn't that a DM thing? You use dice. Where is my shortcuts? I have a tiny bit of sense motive. Come on, load the shortcuts for me. No shortcuts for you. No, only long cuts. At the meat gate. Meat gate. <laughs> the choicest of long cuts. Uh, have you rolled your results? No, I was waiting for you to figure out how to roll the secret roll. Have you done it? Hey, I did. Pick up the die in your hand and you roll. Oh. 25. Okay. That's my scrutinizing fist. If I had Gius, we could make sure he was honest. <laughs> so, is, so is only Niramore scrutinizing him? I'll give it a shot. Because it'll be laughable, but... For, for, for the record, it seems to be slash GR. Unless you guys saw that roll, in which case it's not. Nope. <laughs> tell us what you rolled and we'll tell you whether you saw it. Gary, you are absolutely sure. This guy can do no wrong. He is the right guy for you and probably knows more about Karamega in his short years than people have forgotten over their entire lives. I like your cut of your jib, little lad. Whatever Here jib is. You are certain he is knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. You're not necessarily certain that he won't take you to places where he's getting a kickback. Right. But he's probably not going to lead you astray in a way that you won't keep retaining his services. Okay, that's fair. That's what I was looking Furthermore, for. Furthermore, 
he does seem to occasionally be eyeing the belt you in particular are wearing. Oh, really? Like he recognizes it? Difficult to say. So, hmm. Gav, have you seen this belt before? Couldn't say for sure, Gav. One, um, one belt looks the same as the other, mostly. Well, you see, reminds me of another Pathfinder. Who might that be? Yeah, fellow went by Yando Klein. Now that sounds he, familiar. He, Do you know? Have you seen him recently? He um, he he goes kind of uncharacteristically quiet. Um, nah, uh, no, no, Gov. Haven't seen him much at all. No, something tells me you might be hiding something there, Gav. We're gonna have a working relationship. We've got to be honest with each other. All I know is last I heard he wasn't in good terms with other Pathfinders. Well, this is possible. So is he in the city, do you think? No, haven't seen him for a long time. Mm, we heard he was heading this way. <laughs> Don't know who you heard that from. Of the Pathfinders. I wouldn't think he'd be in much contact with other Pathfinders after they kicked him out. Yeah, some of them are real assholes. Yeah, they are. It's true. We're different. Honest wood, Gov. Haven't seen him in town. All right. You're not interested in selling information? That's fine. We'll just retain you as the guide. So, uh, have you heard of any other notable arrivals recently? You know, people in a giant, fastly moving, flashy chariot, or uh... <laughs> all well, similar. This is Karamega Gov. What arrival isn't flashy and important? <laughs> Look at the four of yous. We got someone here with skin shining like the sun. Yeah. A lovely Tenga lady. Mr. Crispy Hands, the elven mage of wonders. Yeah. And a guy who looks like he's walked all the way from the crown of the world to be here. He's smarmy, I like it. Let's employ him. He's horrible. Let's, let's employ him. He sounds like he works for Al Capone. Horrible urchin lad. We have a bargain. All right. Where do you want to go first? Or rather, should I ask, what brings you to Kamega? That's a terribly good question. <laughs> We seek our fortune, items of wondrous power, and uh, things hidden from our sight. You know. So you're saying you had to go in the underground? It's quite well, possible. We just, just came up through there, and that was real fun. Well, I don't know, Gov. You ask me only fools and dwarves go in the ground. Well, and the wardens. But uh, there's a fair bit of overlap there as well. I mean, sure, they're the stories, gold and jewels, ancient scrolls, magic swords, the whole lot. Um, I've seen a bit of it come true, too, but uh, more often I've seen the tatted caucuses the wardens pull up out of them holes, eyes all plucked out and limbs broke to bloody rags, heads clean torn off. Those are just the ones they bother to bring up, too. Nah, I don't think Thunder City is um, really for me or for you there, if you ask me. If the gods had meant us to live underground, we'd all be born dwarves, and the first step I take down there will be when the Phrasmans lay me in the ground. Leave the deeps alone, I say, and pray to never take interest in you. There are things down there, Gov. Things a man was not meant to see. Yeah, we've seen a few of them. <laughs> Liquor. So, yeah, do we want to uh, find a tavern and get the lay of the land, uh, find a place to Lodge, or? Yeah, I think that's probably a wise idea. Gav, what options do we have for taverns in the city? Well, I'd have to ask, um, what gang you feel most comfortable with, then? What options do we have? Well, if you're, um, if you like your magics and your constructs, you can go into biz there. Hang out with the Ardok family and see how they run those things. But uh, 
just uh, keep an eye on their digits while you're there. Then there's um, always good anchor tay if you like things a bit on the colder side. Get yourself a nice brand new zombie to do all your manual labor for. Um, hmm. Can't remember some of these. <clears throat> I'll say no to zombies. Yeah, no zombies, please. <laughs> no zombie girl. We do. I, I, I believe we heard a story of how how good the constructs were. Perhaps we should go there. Uh, that's what or, you like. Or perhaps we should have a bit of a tour around the city and see where we feel most at home. All right. We can do that if you're willing for a nice good day of walking. I can what show you think? all around the ring. Shall we, shall we take a walk and get our bearings? Sure. I think that's a wise idea. Keep Figure out, out where things are. People are shadowing us through the... Uh... Hmm? Are people shadowing you? Uh, well, I was thinking that Niramore and uh, Misaki being so observant should watch for that. Uh... Okay. We'll keep an eye on you, Gary the Elf. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can find the quick city explanation of the districts here. But so, well, yeah, you guys got the map to look at. But basically... Um, How? Yes. I, I'm having huge... Lag problems. We're freezing, sweetie. Are we having issues? I think Lindsay has frozen. It would appear so. It'll probably drop her in a second and she can rejoin, would be my guess. Mm. But for the computer I'm recording on and my machine seem fine. Good, good. But Lindsay has frozen. Try to exit and re enter, babe. Oh, she may be back. She moved. Hello? No. And I think she froze again. She she moved to put her finger in her mouth and now she's frozen again. So it's like the good market district and the Yeah, I, I got I got the um districts here. Do you have the the guide to Camega or whatever it is? Yeah. That's pretty cool. I, I've got that somewhere myself, but mm -hmm. So I got the brief. Shall we continue, or do we want to have Lindsay figure out technical difficulties? Ah, she doesn't seem to be coming back in. Let me go stick my head in the room and see. Okay. Let me do that. The main thing will keep this conversation yeah, keep, going. Yeah, keep it rolling, people. Oh, there she oh, goes. There, just goes. <laughs> there she goes. Hopefully she'll rejoin in a second. But uh, one, one thing I do like that I think most people forget about Pathfinder is the city stat blocks. Uh -huh. Things like corruption and crime and economy, if you actually look up what they mean, uh -huh. those are like just generic modifiers for the average person in town. Right. So something like someone's bluff would be the average crime modifier in town. Ah. Uh -huh. That's interesting. Or, or a, a penalty bonus or something, because that's, again, if you're listening to the average person off the streets, you, you don't just want to have them at a plus zero or something. But. So is Kiramega a bigger city than uh, Magnamar? It is a small city. It is a fair bit smaller. Um, the population is only 8,000. Sorry, I thought I heard door opening. Which would have been odd. Anyway. <clears throat> the nieces are creeping up on you. And it is just very simply unique in that it is a city of anarchy. There she a is. Complete anarchy. Hello, Lindsay Halpern. Are you Hello, back? Lindsay. Lindsay the muted. Kind of. Sorry about that, Bert. I guess you no, got It's telling me that it's having issues keeping me connected. Oh, how oh. come? What kind of issues? Well, I was trying to tell you when you blithely were like, oh, yes, Lindsay's just logged out, blah, blah, blah. No. Sorry. I've been having issues for like the past five minutes, and I've been trying to tell you. Oh, I'm sorry, Spoonie. And you were like, no, it's Lindsay, she's frozen. No, I haven't heard anything you said for the past five minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetheart. Have you, um, 
I've managed to pop- just get back in. Are you getting pop-ups and stuff? Yeah. Saying what, like, I'm having connectivity issues and all sorts of shit. Sucks. I'll try. Still, you're coming through pretty good now. Yeah, you see, that's all right now. Well, I'll log back in, but I don't know what the problem is. You might be okay. Might just have been a glitching connectivity briefly. Oh, hopefully that miss too much. Basically, just what's happening is Gav is going to give you a walk about the city, explain the general districts to you, and who's roughly in charge of them, hopefully. So you just get a general idea of the town. Cool. Mm. So again, you probably just want to keep your eye on that hand up there. I got the Oh, yeah, you need to redistribute it. Is it the map one? Yeah, yeah. It, you could probably either that or pick it up from the handouts on the okay. sidebar. Mm-hmm. And if I was planning better, I could have put more of this stuff on there, but <laughs> hindsight. Yeah, Lockhart, no planning, it's just terrible. So, as he leads you about, he kind of will explain the various um, sections of the city, as well as who runs it, and some little bits of um, the general atmosphere. So if you have any particular questions, you can ask. Otherwise, I'll try and go through this pretty briefly. Okay. So, uh, heading down from the Warrens through the ring, we have the Biz Dix District. Uh, oh, here. Lindsay died again. That's, uh, where, that's where the Ardock family uh, you mentioned is. Hang on a second. Let me go check. Yes. What's going on? Keep going, boys. I recall we have so, a side quest over so there. Now, so, so now that Hal's not here, at what point do you ask him to, um, our, our, uh, as he kind of points out some of the bloat mages and whatnot around, to, and explain that they use the power of the blood to... Yes, I'm going to have to... Uh... Well, now I'm scared to separate too much from the party. <laughs> well, but you'll have Brunsk with you. Well, that's true. It's possible once he gets you settled down and they're drinking at a tavern or going to sleep, you can ask him for some late-night introduction or something like that. That'll work, yeah. I also need to uh, you know, go refresh my local knowledge and stuff since my uh, all my knowledge is work off gathered tales of charisma now these days. Of course, yes, yes. You go through many bars that night. I have to clean myself at the you. city with my mighty constitution score and... Uh, but, but but yes, how how to explain Kermag in a few few yes. brief moments. My big challenge is going to be how to surreptitiously drop the severed hand somewhere as we're wandering about. That's Since I don't one. have good... Oh, to drop the, the, uh, the message somewhere uh, ah, public. Yes. Because well, since I, mean, I don't have good sleight of hand type skills. but the, the, the simple thing is, of course, just having a good um, asking Gav for help. For anything. That's true. I mean... Why, why, why can't you trust someone you pay five gold a day? Yeah. Clearly, that, that, that builds a lot of trust and whatnot there. Exactly. Welcome back, Lindsay. Again. And Hal's. How do we do that? Right. Hello. We may be good. I think some, one of our applications was causing some kind of problem with um, Chrome, it seems. It was requesting access to stuff, and it was causing a problem. Hopefully we should be back in and maybe stable. Excellent. That'll be a first. Like a little faces that are pulling. It's kind of cute. I think you look kind of comfy. Are you okay? It's not comfy. Anymore. Not comfy. It look so comfortable. I know, but I'm faking it. You're faking comfortable. I just want to lie down. And just be like, oh, you could. You just hold the laptop. Over <laughs> I was thinking if I could get away with like tilting the laptop down a little bit like that. It. And if anybody could tell if I was actually just like lost. Oh, look. Oh, that's so much nice. Just do that. That's fine. Never mind if I'm like lying down. You want to get your uh, Bluetooth keyboard? No, Put yourself at ease, lady. I just, I, I end up mostly just listening and like pretending I'm paying attention anyway. So, Chore. but like you, you just thought like, you know, <laughs> I don't need to type a lot if I'm meant. <laughs> you could just, uh, you could just. I, I listen to the story bits. <laughs> oh, you're funny. I think we're good. It looks more stable. Oh, come back. If I don't touch anything, then I can't be accused. You look of very it. comfortable. I'm kind of envious of. Yeah. I'm kind of envious of you. Boring, then somebody might need to come and poke. Hang me. on, hang on. I'm going to lie down too. There we go. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Let me tilt that down. Okay. 
So we have better connection-ish? Uh, I think we're good. Everything okay. seems fine on the recording machine, so... <laughs> I, I shouldn't even ask. <laughs> that was you, Lockhart. You did that. I shouldn't even ask. <laughs> Is everything going right with no problems? <laughs> Boom! <laughs> yeah, it's okay. That's the kiss of death. I <laughs> can't <laughs> Oh. But, uh, in case listeners are wondering what me and Thing are talking about, he's taking a secret homebrew feat involving blood drinking and something. Yes. Go along so, with the blood members or blood uh, blood transcription yes, spell yeah. that I took ages ago and have never used. Which is not meant for um, uh, spontaneous casters and stuff. So we're we're having fun with it, and partly <laughs> because Gary is the only caster, so anything that gives him more variety of spells is a good thing, right? Exactly. Okay, let's see if I truly have the kiss of death. <laughs> Everything's going great. Use the app. No? Okay. Okay. Just don't open that map attachment. Okay. It might have been the map that was killing her. Is it really? Ooh, the guy mm. the map all, all the time. Oh, they may have frozen again. We have not frozen. I'm not frozen. She's frozen. It would appear so. Vecna's what, frozen. What, what's with... I hope Vecna's not frozen. <laughs> what's with the bizarre, random, technical difficulty? I don't know. We have some sort of curse moving about the place. It's like we're going fine for an hour, and then, bam! Internet's like, they've been an hour without a problem. Nope, can't have it. Shit. Much cause problem. You know, you think we'd be smart and just, like, jump straight into gaming so we could get in an hour before the technical problem, but that's not going to happen. No, not like entire what? what? I hear sound from the guys now. Yeah. Try to or well, maybe not. Well, this is not terribly entertaining. Audiot, down market. But I have... Hello. 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 Lindsay, Lindsay's going to reboot her computer and see if that picks up a better signal. It's popping up okay. saying she's got connectivity problems, which is odd because she's the only wireless device on the network because I connect my laptop via Ethernet. You should connect her via Ethernet, too. Yeah, but she's nowhere near my router. You got um, 100 meters. I'm not going to run a 100-meter cable down my house. If we want to keep things game-focused but not entirely relevant information, mm. I have some quotes taken uh, of Gav taken from the Care Mega book. Oh, God. <laughs> that are his little speeches. Is your character in the Care Mega book? He is. That's kind of cool. There's some scary-looking characters in that I remember. I don't have Although that I've, book. I think we're mostly he, at the level of most he, of He basically characters. introduces with these paragraphs each section of the book. That's pretty cool. And I, I just had them on tap. My, my initial plan was if something was vaguely related, I would go into one of these tangents, which I did with the talk oh. of going underground. <laughs> so uh, his new to the city one. Shall we have that? Uh, so, yeah. so she can hear. Are you sure? What's, Lindsay's, what's... Lindsay's, Lindsay's arrived behind me while her computer restarts. Okay. So I could, as you can see, there she is all crossed and ready to tell me off. So, ow. <laughs> there she is. There. Oh, okay. she's dodging. She's dodging. Get harder. <laughs> there she is. Hello. Yeah. Let me try this. Hold on. Let me pull my headset so she can hear us. Hello. Uh -huh. Hello. No. No. There they are. Hello. 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 You're now coming out of my speakers, so she can hear what you're saying. Excellent. So I, I was I was just going to go through some of the blurbs that Gav has to tell you about Caramega. Okay. All right. We'll be back on again in a minute. 
but I thought I'd come through and listen. That's fair enough. Like I said, these, these are interesting things, but not necessarily important. These aren't the districts and whatnot, but anyway. New to the city? All respect and honors, Gov, but you're not. No one is. These walls have seen wonders that would turn you and me to dust, and they'll see more after you're gone. No, sir. Kamega may be new to you, but you're nothing new to Kamega. Ten thousand years she slept here, and still we've yet to wake her. Some would say we're her dreams on account of our strangeness, but I don't buy that. I say we're her children. No fat law of good that does us. See the city. She's like a, a giant insect who will devour her young without a second thought. In here, there's none who will do so much as bother to forget you when you're gone. You're nothing. I'm nothing. And these warrens will be our tomb. Eh, but why the long face, chum? This is home. And besides, you've got me. And for a five or a day, I'm your new best friend. Oh my God, <laughs> so He's quite the philosopher, really. Apparently. He's, yes. That's funny. But so, you know, so what he's saying is it's a pretty nasty city. Yeah. But you got me. That's all good. And of course, you know, some people, they never get the hang of the ring. To yeah. them, it's one big maze. They never get used to the closeness, the walls on all sides, the layers on top of layers. These folk, they move to Withershins, and good riddance. They may like our business, but they don't like the ring, which is missing the point entirely. These walls aren't a rat's nest. They're a palace. In Kermega, even our outdoors is indoors. Who could give up such a luxury? I'll take the glowworms of biz over the sun any day. Ah, but the core, that's where the money's made. And in Kermega, if you aren't winning, you're losing. And I'm a right sore loser. So grab your hat and hold on to your purse. We're headed sunside. <laughs> sunside. So oh, the bits in the middle are open to the sky, but the bits around the outside are all inside. Yes. So it's like a donut. Yes. Okay. A giant building or prison or something. There is a rather clever 3D model someone made where they can lift the roof off, actually, to show the inside of the city and stuff. That's pretty cool. It was rather in intricately detailed. But, is it online? I mean, the, the, is it digital, or is it? Uh, no, no, they made a physical model. Foam core and I'm not quite sure. It's been a while, um, but I mean the, the thing is, Sorry. it's not like the donut is one hollow ring, right. but it is layers and sections and tunnels within it. Right. I say, I'm just going to say you've just mentioned something, so by now Pencil Monkey has found it and has posted it before. What? <laughs> oh, he's 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 found it from the Pies of Forum, posted the forum. He's I gotcha. found it and posted it on the forums. Yes. And uh, the last one. The, the, the last little speech of his I have. Thing is, Gov, everyone wants something from you here. The merchants want your coin. The freemen want your ideology. The necros and Ancarte want your corpse. The Taliboys want, uh, yeah, well, never mind what they want. Save that you'll know when they come looking. The point is, everyone here wants a piece here, and some want the whole blasted thing. The key is doing, to doing well here is making them all think you want something from them too, to help uh, keep them on their guard. Otherwise, they'd like to give you something else, right between the ribs. It's a rough city, Gov. Try to keep up. Hmm. <laughs> Hooray! Luckily, we're mighty and powerful, so we're going to be uh, doing just fine. Right, you and half the population, Gov. You and half the population. <laughs> I, see, I see Lindsay moving. Hello, Lindsay. You're looking very cute tonight. Oh, trying to suck her up. Oh. Uh, you should be sucking down instead? You've, you've got a kind of little grin on that I quite like this evening. It's been on most of the night. I'm liking it. It's my concentrating <laughs> grin. It's, <laughs> it's, it's progressed from your lip chew. It's now the concentrating grin. Okay, I think I'm on and I'm stable. I'm just going to go grab the drink I was mid-making, and he took my thing again, and I'm good. I can still hear you, though. She can hear. She's good. You'll okay. be able to hear her using the microwave. So, shall we go through the districts quick, then? Sure. sure. So, 
we have Biz. The fabled ledge manors, known as the balconies of Biz, climb the walls of this immense chamber-like cliff dwelling, ruled fairly but severely by a family of brilliant golem crafters. Mm. Well, As you walk... Family, right? Yes. As you walk through here, um, it, it really is a very interesting and techno well, technologically and magic tech type looking place. But of course, you also see something like... Um, for example, a shady-looking slouching man sliding down the street before he stops dead, face going pale, clutching his left hand, missing the first joint of each finger. Mm. He turns on his heel, walking the way he came quickly. Coming up the street from the opposite direction is a richly dressed man, his belt holding a chisel in a fine leather holster, accompanied by a stone golem. Gav is quick to explain that that is one of the Arduck brothers. Who are the gang? Well, again, Karamega is anarchy. Each district is basically ruled by its own gang, more or less. Anyway, he is one of the Arduck brothers. And uh, anything that goes against the peace of the Arduck brothers is typically punished in digits. <laughs> ah. Nice. They, they, they have rather specific laws about the number of digits per crime and stuff like that. Nice. And uh, once you run out, you run out. So is there an overall council of all these gangs that decides things city-wide then? Or? Oh, no. Goodness, no. Wait, well, they're putting that. Well, it may be the occasional alliance or the occasional neutral zone. Um, typically... Each area takes care of its own, and that's it. Mm. And if, if one area takes off another, you really hope not to be caught in the crossfire. Mm. Uh, next, we have the Cavalcade, the industrial heart of Karamega. Cavalcade houses mills and smithies that are frequently powered by the countless streams and aqueducts that run through it, obviously taking advantage of the water coming off the cliff there. The Bottoms. <laughs> the Bottoms. The Cliffside District is the home of the escaped slaves and abolitionist revolutionaries known as the Freemen, whose riotous celebration of democracy is matched only by the ferocity with which they defend it. Oddly enough, as for the peace of Karamega, it is frowned upon that they steal directly from the slave markets. Um, they are one of the largest purchasers of slaves. Hmm. Buying them and immediately giving them the freedom. freedom. They must which of course, a lot of money to do that somehow. Which of course leads to this odd amount of supply and demand. Hmm. Next, uh, I, I suppose in between them, we have the high side stacks. The richest and most powerful members of Karamega exist not within the city, but rather above it, making their homes in the posh towers so large and accommodating that many of their residents never set foot on the ground. Oh. Next is the Tar Heel Promenade, home of the powerful Arcanist Circle. Tar Heel Promenade is one of the best markets in all of Verigia for items of a magical nature. Uh, then we have Encarte, the most diverse collection of foreigners in a city based on immigration. Encarte is a hodgepodge of cultures and the only district in Karamega that allows undead to walk the streets unmonitored. Hmm. What, well, all uh, undead? Um, difficult to say. You certainly see a number of um, what appear to be zombies, clothed and with various bouquets of like potpourri or like a thing of incense kind of around their necks to keep the smell of rot away from them, that appear to be going on various tasks like bringing back a bag of bread or something like that. Nice. Mm. So this place being all inside in the ring is probably a great place for those people that don't like the light, sunlight. It's possible. There are, between either glowing fungus or set-up lamps or 
things like the glow worms of Biz and other things like that, it is fairly well lit. Mm -hmm. Certainly, though, probably the average human it would be dim light until they grow accustomed. You guys are all doing pretty fine being either low light or dark vision. Well, I'm just thinking of the, uh, like, uh, vampires and stuff that burn in sunlight or whatever. You know, oh, yes, that certainly would be very low sunlight. There are, there are the occasional windows in the side and, and ceiling and stuff. Hmm. Either been there naturally or produced over the years. But for the most part, it's, um, it is dark and not direct sunlight. Uh, the last, uh, I suppose we have the war in which we talked about. Raised long ago by an unknown force, this broken section of the ring has grown into a ramshackle shanty town, seven stories tall, is home to the city's poorest residents. And the Oriat, which is the one I really can't remember what it was, is uh, the most colorful of them all, renowned for its theaters, music, nightlife, bardic college, youthful exuberance, and the sectarian warfare that regularly claims the lives of its citizens. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like this is the party area where the other gangs do their dirty work when it comes down to feuds. So if we end up causing a few corpses, nobody's going to mind too badly. It all depends who they belong to. Uh. <laughs> you you kill some free men, they're probably going to uh, target you just as bad as they target slavers. Uh, in the core, we have... Down markets, a constantly shifting bazaar of tents and stalls. Down market is Karamega's primary commercial district, where foreign caravans meet to trade with locals and each other. The hospice, no city is complete without a hospitality district, and Karamega's is among the best. Hospice offers the best and worst accommodation a visitor could ask for, as well as any sort of licentious entertainment he might desire. And some he'll wish he could forget. Nice. And the... The lust pits. Uh, ah. Wittershins. Ah. Wittershins, which um, Gav basically walks you around instead of through. <laughs> An island of sanity in a city of chaos. Wittershins is a quiet, domestic neighborhood where everyone acts appropriately, lest their neighbors turn them over to the constabulary um, constabulary for readjustments. Nice. So it's Stepford. Yes. That's amazingly good. This is a weird ass place. Yes. <laughs> Interesting, right? Mega. So where would Gav recommend we stay? Uh, Gav would recommend that you stay at the sorry excuse in the hospice. The sorry excuse. Yes. Yes. And how, and how much do they pay for your recommendation? Um, he, he, he hasn't uh, known them to pay visitors for recommendations. <laughs> okay. He, he assures you it's a place where you can pay for any accommodations you, you could wish for. I know, I could wish for a lot. Should we go check that place out? We'll go check that place out. Good as any. Okay. Let me just get to my page here. I've decided to try and put my macros back in again, so if I ask random questions, that's why. <laughs> Have they all gone then, the macros? Well, no, they're just horrifically out of date. And yeah. Not out of date, but you know what I mean. Yes. Like, out of sync with everything we were doing. So, you're introduced to the place. It seems very standard. And as you get inside, you're not overly impressed with the um, quality of it. Um... You are, however, offered um, uh, the rooms for standard-ish prices. Let's see if I can find in prices again here. Top of the night. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's more than a copper. I'm just hearing everything in a Cockney accent now. 
<laughs> Mockney. Mockney. Mockney, sweetie. Well, he wasn't even Mockney. He was full-on, like, faux Mock- Brooklyn or whatever it was. Faux <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I, I wasn't really doing Cockney. I was kind of doing no, it wasn't Cockney, but I'm hearing it in Cockney or New York or something. Yeah, no, you were doing that fine. It was just me that's hearing like Mockney now. <laughs> um, no, it's it's a uh, two silver a day, and um, for 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 meals, that's another silver. Meals basically being gruel in the morning, um, bread and like a potato stew. For the other meals, mm. if, if 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 you want meat, it's another silver a day. If you want good meat, it's a gold a day. Sure. Would you like to see your rooms? Sure. Okay. Sure. So having collected your money, you're brought up to your rooms. Um, they're, they they're basically like closets. There's no beds in them. Whoa. Oh, you um, you you want a room with a bed? What what is this a room for? It's a room. You want a room, right? I mean, you can do whatever you want in it. I don't ask questions. How big is it? Hmm. How big is this room? It it, it looks like there is just this one little hallway where there's many many doors beside each other and very very small rooms. Like how small? Basically, being closets. Monk cell. Oh. Perfect oh, yeah. size for constructs, then. Yeah. It's like Bender's room from Futurama. <laughs> yes, that is a good so, example. So we'll sleep in the closet, then, of Bender's room. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I got Sorry, rates man. for whatever room you want. Uh, if you want a mattress, that could be another silver. If you want a window, that could be another silver. Uh, bathing basins, another silver. It's everything is silver. That's a good rate. How about we give you this gold piece, and you stop asking about, and you get us a proper room with proper amenities, and none of this bullshit. So that would be one deluxe package for the Tengu. <laughs> Can we see the deluxe package, please? For a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be seven gold pieces for the last package for the week. <laughs> okay. It better be a really good room, and I want to see it before I pay. Yeah, not really how it works. It is how it works now. Well, I do got the money for your basic rooms already, so I'll show you to that. Um, he will show you to a basic... One person, but it is very full amenities. It even comes with things like a dresser and like like a com- complimentary mint on the pillow. No, that might be a cockroach. Yeah. Your own personal <laughs> thief. It's a complimentary cockroach on the pillow. And and, and even I'm a bit. Lock, that's, yeah, that's even a good lock thing. on the door. A lock. Oh my yeah, god. That, that sounds like it's about what we're paying kids. <laughs> Fair enough. So, yeah. so if you're all going for that, he is absolutely amazed, and that is one gold piece each. Done. For for yeah. for for Brunsk and Gary, it it's it's one point five for the couples six on deluxe. So. Uh, it, that it, has, it has a slightly with, with... larger bed, a sex swing, and a top of astral glide. <laughs> oh well, in that case. Oh no, no, it's not that furnished, not that furnished. <laughs> no tub. But no, it just it just has a splintery crowning stool in the middle. <laughs> the honeymoon suite. That's right. It's, it's 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 the same room with less walking space and more mattress. Mm. <laughs> so are you paying for a week right away? Sure. Well, are we are we going to be here a week? Oh, we're going to be at least probably a few days trying to figure out where to start out. Or... I'm going to go ahead and pay for a week because that's probably the best way to get a reasonable service and stuff. Yeah. yeah. From him as well. And I'm going to take him to one side. And I'm going to be slightly threatening, but in a 
I'm going to be threatening in a Lindsay way. Threatening in a Lindsay Hal will understand completely. <laughs> Possibly. I have no idea what you mean, sweetie. <laughs> so I'm going to take out another gold piece and I'm going to show it to him. And I'm going to be like, so this gold piece can be for you, but only if you drop the games Good. and you drop all of the silly buffoonery and you make sure that you work only for us Buffoon. and only for our benefit for one week. This like, is the innkeeper or your guide? The, the guide. Because I don't like the guide and I want to keep him on side, so I'm offering to pay we're, him. We're paying him five gold a day, so... One yes, gold but I'm day. offering to pay him extra. Uh, but extra. in a slightly... Without the buffoonery. Yeah. I like, I like the word buffoonery. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost as good as meat kit. No, it's not as good as meat kit. <laughs> if we employ yeah. you, then you have to... So you're offering him one gold for a week? Correct. No, extra. I'm, I'm one gold a day extra? I'm basically offering an untold amount of, of extra ah. money that he can earn. Should Without, he, no buffoonery. Should he? Loyalty program. Oh, yeah. so what you're saying is you're essentially going to tip him when he does good shit. Yes. I see. But I'm also... You write by us and we'll see you write. Is yeah. what she's saying. But also, right. I'm not going to be messed around with. So if he makes me feel that he's not being loyal to the team, then I'll peck his eyes out. Buffoonery. All right. He, he smiles at him. All right, I understand what you're saying. No, no more games. No more kickback things. Just me yeah. giving you the best experience of KMA guy can. Sound yeah. good? Sounds like we understand each other. And I'll give him the gold. Thank you kindly, miss. <laughs> uh, does anyone want to make a perception check? Sure. What the hell? Go, Gary, go. Seven! Good work, Gary. Seven? Do I need to make a perception? Oh, I rolled low. Uh, honestly, at, at this point, to a certain degree, it, you can basically just say, I look over there, and I pretty much say, this is what's happening. Shit. 25. I rolled but, low. But, but it's so much more fun to actually roll it. Hang on. Yes, you can roll it. You need to make you a button on your thing so you can just hit the button. Hello. It's fun enough to do this. What was my 23, isn't it? So. Mm -hmm. You, you will. Ah, no. 143. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> you, you will be able to see what's happening. <laughs> Um, basically, while you guys are kind of examining your rooms, Gav has kind of um, taken the innkeeper to the side a little bit, and um, the innkeeper has tossed him the gold coin, basically. The funerary. <laughs> Chop off his arm. <laughs> well, that's kind of... Yeah, we knew that was going to happen. Yeah, and that was still kind of partially from before. Mm -hmm. Everything was, else from this that pre, That's pre buffoonery. Yeah. I don't care if he gets kickbacks for stuff. That doesn't bother me. But I don't want him to be, like, working for like the triad or something. <laughs> <laughs> or the Aspis Consortium. No, not the triad. The dryads. The dryads. <laughs> that's far more. <laughs> fast, right? If if, if you look. inquire, he he will say that. He he was thinking that you guys might have been flush enough for the uh, um what's it called now uh, the canary house, but he didn't think that would um, suit your feathers quite right. That was a good choice, thank you. Also, it's good to remain relatively incognito. This place looks kind of normal. Yes, because we're such a low key party. Yeah, we're, we're pretty. <laughs> yeah, we are. We're pretty um, recognizable. Now so, search. He, um, now that he's shown you the city, basically he says if you want to just um, grab a bite to eat, a pint, and we can discuss what Caramega has to offer you. Let's do it. Sounds good. That sounds good. So then, if you really want me to help you, 
why don't you say cards on the table? Help me figure out why you uh, pathfinders or um, pathfinder murderers, if you be, uh, <laughs> have come to town for. I think we've come to town for a lot of reasons. Yeah, we have a lot of reasons to be here, apparently. <laughs> we are actually here to, for sightseeing purposes, kind of. Briefly. So, do we have an idea of where the Shard is in this city? Um, the did last get, thing... Did we get a sense of that or when, not? When you, when you checked in Magnamar, you knew it was somewhere around Kermega. You haven't since checked again. So, can we, like, shuffle one of these two off into a corner and have them check again? Yeah, I can go to the privy and check. Yes. I'm pretty go, sure go, I'm go, there. Go play with your Shard in Ooh. the privy. Does Gary have the newest shard? Who has the shard? Yeah, I've got the shard of lust. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. So. You know, for anybody that hasn't seen that, what you're doing just means nothing to anybody other than the fact you're making really bizarre sex noises. They, they should go and buy the gamers too. That's all they need to know. Yeah. You really shouldn't. So, so, so Gary is just it's going funny. aside and um, concentrating on the shard. Concentrating yeah. on the shirt. The only reason to watch any of the games is for them to do the whip it, whip it good. The whip it. <laughs> <laughs> Which will now be stuck in my head for another two weeks. <laughs> it's funny. And only because they clearly. I see, I see that dudes in the Knights of the Dinner Table. Um, two of them are. Two. Oh yeah, the guy who plays the other yeah. dude. The male luster uh, guy, Christian, is uh, B.A., and uh, the guy who plays the GM and the paladin is uh, Bob. Bob. The guy that plays the GM guy is the one that does the whip it song, isn't it? Yeah. Nathan Rice, yeah. Yeah, and he just does it, like, on the spec. They just make it up as they're doing it, and the outtakes are hilarious. For Gamers 3, he's got a great Firefly rant, too, that they did in yes. Gen Con. <laughs> Gamers 3? Have you seen yeah. Gamers 3? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We have we an extended cut. I don't know. I wasn't... I haven't watched all the extended cut. I wasn't hugely... Uh, ranting. Bad, bad. Game. Game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... So, Gary is going off to concentrate. There's a bright shining light in the corner where Gary is standing and he comes back knowing that the shard seems to indicate in a roughly downward direction. Of course it does. Possibly the Undercity. It, it doesn't really give you any sense of scale or depth or anything more than... Dude, it's in your pants again, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Gad kind of um, raises his eye and says, look, you pay me for your guy, you pay me for my loyalty, what more do you want from me? Lay it out and I see what I can do. Gary? Something. <laughs> it's we... probably best you don't know what it is, though. <laughs> right now, anyway, until you've earned our trust. Look, there's more than enough things I'm already not supposed to know in Karamega. One more isn't going to make me suddenly a coward or a towel boy. Well, even we don't know really what it is right now. Or where. Taking a quick glance around for any invisible people watching us. Listening <laughs> in. I'll, uh... Gary sees so you're saying thing. you're looking for something. We're looking for something. Something okay. special. Okay. I can work with that. Something unique. Even better. Unique, ancient, magical. Do we have an, Gary, do you have any idea where it is? There's, um... It lowers. Two. But beneath us, it devours. Ah! What's that from? What? Buffy. That's it. If you, if you look into something in Camega, to the there's in the two places I think are the best. That's either um, the library at the thoracic spire or the augers. Fortunately, there's a bit of problem with both. <laughs> the thoracic spire, the last few days, closed tight. No one really knows why. Maybe they're taking a long nap. Who knows? 
Anyway, librarians haven't opened them for anyone, as people can say. Now, of course, that wouldn't be an issue because my first choice for information is the Argos. They're tapped into the pulse of the city, as well as their own. But the um, problem is they've kind of gone on strike, some sort of conflict with the um, Ada family and Biz. And uh, they've been looking for someone, but haven't really found someone who's willing to step up and resolve the issue, you'd say. Augers, auspices, seers? Um, yeah, the troll oracles. They sound like they might be the kind of people that we could do with talking to. I mean, they are basically looking for someone outside the city who um, doesn't really have some other gang affiliation, so they're not bringing a third party into it. And then before you know, the whole city's at war. Oh, we're from outside the city. Yeah, we do have a bit of a gang affiliation, though. Yeah, Pathfinders aren't really a gang here. Okay. So maybe we should go talk to them. You say they're trolls. Yeah, trolls. You know, slit their guts open, look at them, read your fortune. <laughs> read their own entrails. <laughs> Why don't I speak troll? There's got to be easier way. <laughs> Why don't I speak troll? I believe uh, they speak giant, giant. giant, actually. I think, oh, okay. Yeah. They yeah. actually speak giant. I mean, yeah, like... Don't 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 think about it like usual around the mill trolls. These are seers, people who know what's going on in Camega, and they probably won't eat you if you don't insult them. Gary, I can't are you vouch listening? for Nearmore, but uh... Gary, are you listening? Yes. He he he's, he he kind of smiles at, at the stunned reactions from this last one. <laughs> okay, let's go see them. All right. Do we want to rest and heal from our uh, journey, or...? Yeah, it's still the same day. Looks like we still have some uh, residual pain. Yeah, because I'm at, like, half okay, a so why, don't, why don't we... Uh, I guess walking around the city probably took a goddamn long time, so why don't we rest it up tonight? It is true. That, that being said, he does point out, um, actually, if you look there in the corner, I think that might be one over there we can talk to. There is so, so there's a troll in the corner, is what you're saying. There, there's, a, there's a troll at the um, tavern of the um, story excuse. How did I not notice that? Oh, I'm Gary. That's right. <laughs> well, in fairness, yeah. there's yeah. also a naga as well as um, a huge man with a, an, in full lacquered armor tied to like this waifish person by chain, and, as, as well as another person who has like two um, uh, basically undead female scantily clad attending to him. Did you say there's a naga? Yes, a naga. Like a, Sorry, he... like a human-headed snake person. Yes, Gav, Gav calls it a worm folk as, he, as, as, he, as you say naga. This is going to be a great place to get spell components. <laughs> <laughs> what a bizarre place. I was going to say fish are friends, not food, but... They're not fish. But... Caramega, yes. Yes, you do miss the troll in the corner because there's other things distracting you. <laughs> That's why my perception checks are so low. Wow, what's that? Oh, I mean, there, there's also a, a humongously fat man. Like, like not even fat. It's like his skin is bloated and, and pooling blood. He actually appears to be leaky a little bit of blood from his eye and just it's hanging out in this liquidy things off his arm and he's carefully putting leeches onto his skin in like a, some methodical manner as well. Um, is that contagious? I might be able to, you know, do some... Ah, no, that's um, one of the bloat mages. They, um, they figure there's uh, magical power to be gained in the blood, so the more blood you have, the more powerful you are as a mage. And other stuff they do with it. Some of them go really far with it, and uh, basically they got to keep themselves real uh, carefully balanced. Otherwise, something about the too much blood in the brain uh, going crazy and killing everybody. What a lovely place. Let's find this thing and get the hell out of here. <laughs> oh, come on. Masaki, can you talk to that troll? Um, as in, I speak the same language, as it? Do I want to go and talk to it? Like, ask it out on a date? 
I think we're going to talk to it anyway. It, so. He or she may actually speak common or other things, too. Well, it might, but it might be nice to greet it in giant. Hello, troll. Gav, Gav kind of winces. Um, please excuse my friends, but they um, wish to seek an audience with one of the revered augurs of Kamega to um, deal with the difficulties that plague the clan. What he said. And he, he, he bows his head slightly. Um, follow and do the same as he does. Like the he, he, he motions towards Nairmor and Brunsk as well. I'll, I'll nod my head towards the troll. Quite a I've never met a troll before. Sir, madam, or indiscriminate person? Oh, it is somewhat difficult to say. But you think it is probably the madam perception. Oh, holy crap. <laughs> it's kind of breasts and whatnot. How do they talk? How do they really, really, how do they talk? They haven't closed that mouth. They're going to put both their eyes out. <laughs> um, well, I guess they just throw them. As she turns around, the long purple toga has a horizontal slit in the stomach covered in old blood stains. Ah, you're disemboweling. She reads her own entrails. That's so fabulous. <laughs> do they really do that? Apparently mm -hmm. that's what he said. Yeah. That's gross. Trolls regenerate damage. Yeah, well, I know that. So they can cut themselves open, read their own entrails, and then stuff them back inside. That's so <laughs> bizarre. There's something to be said for showmanship. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. How do trolls have PSD is like a what? As long as that's something in the womb, it'd be fine. How does that troll have PSD is? Never push well, it out. Obviously, if they if they're pierced, then it's prevented for. It's the same way we have pierced ears; they grow back if you take the piercing out. Well, after a while, I don't think they do. No. Only one sure. of mine did. Yeah, Lindsay's is one. Well, Lindsay's yeah. is the main problem. And the trolls, I mean, as long as they're kept in, it just they would just heal almost instantly. Or you can just have the thought of piercing them fresh every morning. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Get your zombie naked slave to do it for you. My mum, in a fit of being as classy as she was, got my ears pierced when I was a baby. And my granddad and my gran had an absolute fit, so they okay. took them out. And then my mum had my ears re-pierced when I was, like, five. And I remember having them done, and there was still... One of the holes from the first time was still apparent, so... One of the holes in my ear is like an amalgamation of two, so it's slightly mm -hmm. bigger than the other. And one of them's still re, re healed over and is very difficult to actually put earrings in, so they do heal quite quickly. You don't have those things. Uh, 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 oh. They freak you out, don't you? Hey, yeah. If, if, if any higher being or beings had intended for me to have massive holes in my ears like that, I'd have been born with them. I remember when we were at um, Bohem and Kenny came along after having it done, and literally he was bleeding out of his ears. He was just sat there <laughs> bleeding, and we're like, dude, what the fuck? Yeah. They go hardcore and have pure cerebellum. Like, they had, um, he had them um, gauged up, because you're supposed to start small. Right. But he didn't. He had them basically done with a... An apple core. Like a punch, oh. and then forced wide. Nope. Very gross. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> oh, my nope. <laughs> so, Troll, introduce really? yourself as Vargan, in case you couldn't tell from the name on the handout. She asks, So, can you tell me a bit about yourselves? I am... And then I'll, I'll, I'll pause while I try and remember who I'm supposed to pretend to be right now. <laughs> An envoy of the Tengu people. That's yes, clever. I see that. I can speak a little bit of this language, but excuse me if I make any mistakes. Um, she, she, she basically says... Uh, that is very interesting. I speak a bit of this language too, in a rather 
accented way, it's, it's quite possible common is her favorite language, actually. What were you talking to a giant? I was trying to, yeah. It's probably like pygmy giant. She, she will say, uh, excuse me, uh, I don't talk often in the giant tongue. Not much call for it in town. Um, I wanted to be polite and address you in what I thought was your favorite language, but I'm happy to change back and talk to you in a language everybody can understand, if you like. Please, dear. We're so, all in care, Mega. So that will be Thessalonian, then. <laughs> well, a, a language yes. these common folk can understand. I see you are, Tengu, your name. Maybe where you're from, if you wish. I can't even remember where I'm from. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have my homeland filled in on my own. Uh, I I'm am Brusk. I come from land of the Norn kings and Magnamar and Ladies Light, yes? He's from Russia. And I beat Master Gary. <laughs> ah, they call me Gary? I five, Brunsk. Did you make another tea? No. You did, didn't you? Where's my tea? <laughs> the same place that, that you left me for an hour sleeping. Oh. I am appalled. I never make myself tea without making you one. It'll sneak back. I was rushing to get back to the computer. Yeah, huh? He put right. full Starbucks here, you could just reheat. Yeah, I guess that's true. So, um... Well, we've all just know. recently arrived from, uh, Magnamar. Just, just this ah, very day. Quite the long journey you've taken. What brings you to Care Mega that you come to an Aga for to see? We're looking for something. Something? Someone? Yeah. Something. Powerful relics from the Thessalonian age. Ah. Well, say it was a sh we can perhaps... Broken piece of something. Oh, Maybe. sorry? You could say it was a broken piece of something. That is very interesting. And, um, you, mm. sir? Yes? You have not I, introduced yourself? I, I am Nirimo. Um, Over justice. From Tien, originally. You do not look from Tien. I think well, you fit in very well in Kamega. Thank you. She, she have... packs you hard, but perhaps soft for her on the arm with her big claw hand. Th thank you, madam. I presume the boy has already explained the nature of our organization. Uh, While it's something of an open secret that many of our divinations are, shall we say, more logical than magical, this is not always the case. There are those among us who still retain the old gifts. Hmm. My brother August Steele is gifted. His visions are unique and frequently unmarketable, which is why he rarely leaves the temple. Yet someone wants to harness that ability. The Ardak brothers are artificers and golem crafters, the most powerful family in Biz. They run everything in that district, and we have long-standing relationships between our factions that must be maintained. Yet one of their younger members, an arrogant little tinkerer named Birkenin, has gone off on his own and arranged the kidnapping of Augustil from the very foot of the temple steps and holds him hostage even as we speak, studying my brother like one of his machines. The Arducks have ignored our requests to rein in their rogue brother, we cannot engage them within their own territory, nor can any of our usual agents. But you are different. Bring back my brother, and we will bring you the information you seek. 
Would you like some wolf pelts with that? <laughs> it's wolf tongues. Uh, but, not, but not all wolves will kill wolf you underestimate the worth of my dear brother? No, not at all. No. Where, where exactly is, is he being held? In the manor of Birkenin, the Ardok brother in Biz. Okay. Are so, you just. Sorry. So, are we supposed to just go there and retrieve him? Or is this a matter of some um, delicacy? It is up to you how you wish to go about it. As long as you are successful, I care not. The Yardak brothers have not responded to our requests. Perhaps you may speak with them. It is difficult to say what they themselves think of Birkenin in his current occupations. So what is he currently doing? Torturing my brother, trying to study what makes him work. Oh. Okay. You, you've described this Birkenin as rogue. Uh, is he rogue enough that there may not be reprisals if we're uh, a little slight bit messy in extracting your brother? What good is messy? Possible. Certainly, there appears to be enough family loyalty not to pursue him on our behalf. However, if he were removed, it's hard to say how much that loyalty would still last. Perhaps there would be one or two favored brothers who would still mourn for him. The current prophecies are saying, however, that he is a less than valued member. If you wish to try your luck speaking to the most influential Ardok family member at the kiln, that is your choice. Personally, if it were in my power, I would destroy the whole manor and rip the little filthy thing apart, tear him limb from limb. Jerry. But of course, the Argus must do our best to remain neutral in this city. A service everyone can access. Yeah. You, you get the feeling between what Gav has said and her own admissions that the Augers are really much more of a um, highly accepted information brokerage. Mm. Okay. So, do we need to ask for anything else? Uh... Where should we bring your brother once we secure his freedom? The Temple of the Augurs in Hospice, I believe. Yes, whatever district they're in. Gath can lead you there. The Temple of the Troll Augurs. I'm sure it's on our tourist map. <laughs> That's right. Actually, I... it is in Down Market. Hmm. Okay. So, how about we rest, and then go, do we want to talk to these things, or do we just want to go deal with stuff? It would be best, I think, if we got some green light from his side as well. Uh, we can certainly try that. Uh, our diplomacy efforts are mighty. Okay. They are mighty indeed. Okay, so let us rest and heal, and then we'll go and see... Um, Gav? Yes? Would it be normal if we wanted to speak to whoever is in charge of the Ardok family to send some kind of note in advance, or would turning up be acceptable in this place? Um, well, uh, what you uh, need to understand is the Ardok brothers, um, they all work together, but uh, of course they say they're equal decision makers. Mm -hmm. But of course there is the first among equals. That would be uh, Merriman Ardok. Mm. He's usually at the kiln. Ah, might be best to uh, send them in and see if he can do an audience for you. Okay. I wouldn't be disrespectful to just stop by either. 
Okay, so maybe we should send a note in advance saying we're coming tomorrow. If he has time to see us, that would be good. Sound fine? Sounds good. So, I say starting to get the Wake Care Mega Works Gov. <laughs> okay, so we'll let him know we're coming rather than ask him if we can. Wrap a note around a dead fish. No, we just give it to a zombie, apparently. <laughs> so, um, I'm guessing there's some way of getting messages around this city. We apply that to it and send a message. I'm guessing there are urchins that will run my message for me. If you guys yeah, plan on staying the night there, Gav will run himself. Well, yes, okay, that's fine. He can run the message too if he likes. I was assuming he might be turning in too. No. He's your best friend. Yeah, okay. Of if you need him. He can run the message and uh, tell them all about us while he's there and get his tip and schmooze. And um, we'll turn up in the morning. So we'll heal overnight, then we'll head out in the morning to meet this dude. All right. Since so, I don't require much sleep and all my uh, knowledge works off of uh, rumor and gathered information, I should uh, probably uh, hang out a little while longer and in the uh, tavern areas and chat up these mages and people about Gary the local arcade on situation. <laughs> Ring of Sustenance. Wonderful for city life. <laughs> Great. Rings of Sustenance rock. I just need that spell that uh, dispels alcohol from your body. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, yep. Yeah. That's... Uh, Gav goes out to deliver the message. You guys have a few beers and try not to be too weirded out by the weird cultural things happening. Um, as um, one person tips the uh, guy holding the two undead ladies and walks into one of the closet rooms with her and returns later breathing slightly heavy and hands her back to him. Zombie prostitute. It's fabulous. What and, a lovely uh, place. Shall we call it there for the night? If you like. It's getting, it's getting a bit late and I do have stuff like dropping nieces off at school and all that tomorrow. Ah. Those nieces. 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 I'm, 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 I'm healing, Lockhart. Yes. I, th I think it's safe to assume that Gary has enough spells to heal everyone to full. Yeah, I've got quite a bit oh, left still. Did you change your max, love? What's your max hits now? Was it 60? Huh? What is your max hit points? Uh, 62. I'm just adjusting your character on the, okay. the hit um, I started to alter my macros. I was going to double check that I was doing it correctly before I filled everything in, but my Elven Curve Blade is 1d20 plus 13 base um, for the first hit, and 1d20 plus 8. Uh, my damage is 1d10 plus 4. Then if I'm hitting with just combat expertise, it's 1d20 uh, minus 2 instead of... So it's... Um, Instead of plus 13, it's plus 11. And okay. the only uh, alteration, it's not an alteration on damage, it's just plus to the AC, isn't it? Yes. Uh, then, you're at plus 2 to your AC? Yeah. And then um, if I'm just hitting power attack, it's just another minus 2. Not uh, if you're making a single attack. Okay. If What's that then? If, if I'm making a if, single if, attack? If, if you're only making your first attack or a single attack a turn, you don't take that minus two penalty. Okay. But if you make more than one attack, the second and the third and the whatever take that minus two penalty. Okay. Um, and the damage goes up by two, so that would make it... Six. Okay. okay. Six for power attack. Mm -hmm. So Boom. it goes up by six. Six. That's what makes it so great. <laughs> That's that's the kind of thing I was missing because I I lost track of everything. Like if we can you, we can make you buttons like I have for a lot of the things. Okay, you do well, let me get this straight and then I can go on mm -hmm. from there. If I'm right. hitting with both combat expertise and power attack, it's d20 and I've got it plus 13 minus two minus two. But, but not, be, not, not to the first one. one. But not only minus two to the first one. Yeah. But um, then it, then it will be minus two, minus two to the other ones. 
Yeah, because you have the feet furious focus, which means your first power attack hit doesn't take the negative. The reason I'm doing it the long way, which like having the 13 and then the minus two, is it yeah. makes it easier for me to remember, like how that's... to adjust it later on. Yeah, that's fine. And then I'm gonna do my sneak attack stuff, and uh, all I need to know is. What is my bite damage nowadays? And what is my bite to hit? Because I haven't got that on my character sheet. Uh, it should be a plus 11 if you are just making the bite. If you are making the bite at the end of a full attack, it'll be a plus 6. Okay. And the damage for it... I know it's not super awesome. Damage, yeah, regular damage, is 1d3 plus 3... Um, and this can and be... there is some the bite gets more complicated as, as for damage wise for an add on I'd have to check my sheets I know that you can combat expertise the bite because it's a melee attack right or it's yeah, something that has strength to do you with can, it you can power attack it too yeah I knew that you could um... it's stuff to do with strength and melee but you can't power attack with a bow Ah, here's my Masaki right. cheat sheet. Correct, there's a different feat for the bow. Okay. Um, uh, and I don't have the stats for my rapier for some reason. So I can't remember it's uh, hit I or died. You, I made you this nice cheat, nice cheat sheet that can be updated. Oh, okay. Is that, oh, is that stuff on there? Okay, yes it is. All right, don't worry about it. I got it then. Sorry, um, no, I, I did. I've got it in the back of my character sheet. I didn't know that the number stuff was on there. If if you can, I can email you with it again. Um, it's one out of date now. Okay. Um, I'll just I'll just alter this one if you want. Oh, you can send a new one. I don't mind. Do, do you still have the cheat sheet I sent? Does it look like? Lindsay has everything. It looks like an Excel graph. Um, I don't think I have an Excel thing. I sent it. I think in the same email with those notes. I didn't get this. This was printed out and given okay. to me by Hal. I can yeah, try. Yeah. I printed what you forwarded to me. Um, or I printed what Lockhart sent, but maybe not the Excel. Lockhart, I, just send me a copy. <laughs> Thank I, you. I, will, I will send a copy and possibly okay. update, because I think it should just be a plus one to all your attack bonuses right now. So. Mm -hmm. well, Is it I've, a plus one to all attack bonuses? Huh? Is it plus one to all attack bonuses? For plus what? 13? For what? For, did she get a plus one attack this level? No. Yeah. I'm just I'm just updating because I hadn't my previous um, I was still on like oh I I know why okay I my there was, was um, still on a 90. belt of dexterity in there that happened yeah um, okay I gotcha I had That's things what... like my perception was still at 19 and stuff like that so I, I knew I was yeah. way out of date yeah yeah no I can send that um, and then you can update that thank you. All right, so uh, anything else we need? or um... uh, We need to stop the recorder, kids. Say goodbye. All right. Bye, all. Bye. Bye. Bye.